Okay, ELE 112, Chapter 8, Section 4, Part 2 video, where we go in and solve a second superposition problem to get you good at these things so you can attack your homework. I want you to realize there's only three resistors in this circuit. One, two, three. Okay? And we're going to be solving this circuit twice with one of the power supplies always missing, which means you have a series parallel circuit, but it's about as small as you can about as small as you can make it before they start getting far more difficult. So I've gone ahead and drawn the circuit and put the direction of the arrows in black um, of the second supply, which you notice is a whopping 24 volts, and it's inverted compared to V1, which is 12 volts, facing in the up direction. So I wanted to go through the ritual of drawing the black curve, the black lines, coming out of the 24 volt supply and going around clockwise, basically, you see that it goes up through R3 and returns to the battery, uh, and it also goes up through the power supply V1 and across R1 from left to right. Now, if we wanted to do the same thing with the second supply, or uh, what is otherwise known as V1, we would start, as we recommended, out of the positive supply, going this way, and we would come down, and we would come around. We would also go this way. Now, what's interesting, after that's been done, what's interesting is that this resistor, R1, circled in blue, heavy blue, resistor 1 appears to have both supplies providing flow through that resistor in the same direction. Therefore, when we write the equation here for IR1, since they're going in the same direction, they add. We show that by putting a plus sign between them, and what you see is IR1, because of the first supply, plus IR1 of the second supply, they add. Now, resistor R2, which is shown in red here, circled, it also has both power supplies flowing in the same exact direction. They are helping each other, and we show that in this equation. It's been well documented. Three parts, three equations. Three parts, three equations. With two power supplies, there are two columns. God forbid we had a third one, we would have a third column. Now, this column to the left is all about V1, and this column to the right is all about V2. Now, do you remember me telling you that you should always make V1 bigger than V2? Well, here's why. All your equations are written exactly the same way, with the same level of confidence, with the same level of correctness. Now, that doesn't mean you can solve the problem because you have to go in and analyze the circuit and you have to pull out current divider, voltage divider, Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's law, uh, superposition now is what you're learning, but you also learned about source transformations. It is possible, although I wouldn't recommend it, that you could do a source transformation in here to help yourself out in some capacity. It, it might help. I mean, it just gets trickier, and it, it's really hard for me to do this online when that happens. So, that being said, we've looked at two of the resistors. The one in yellow here in the middle is the most interesting because you'll notice that the supply on the left, known as V1, goes down through R3, while the supply known as V2 on the right here is going up. Now, 
Logic tells us that 24 volts is bigger than 12. And so maybe, maybe the black line carries most of the current. But you know what? I told you to make it simple, right? Act like a dummy. Make simple choices. Fix it later. So I continue to believe that this power supply over here, IR3V1 in yellow, um, IR2 because of V1 and IR1 because of V1, I continue to believe that that power supply is bigger. So I put it first in the column and then I put the second power supply to the right. What you have to determine as you're working through these is, which way do the signs flip? And again, to reiterate, if the arrows are going the same way, like they are here and here, you put a plus. If the arrows are going the opposite direction, you subtract like number three equation. Now that we've done the equations, we can go off and solve this table that we have over here, we just figured out, uh, actually, we figured out um, R2. We just figured out the current through R2 up there. Okay. The first page, we came out here, and we assumed that everything was plus to minus. We assumed everything was plus to minus and everything was plus to minus here in this resistor. What this means is that that is not true. What is true is that um, the orientation on this resistor here is plus to minus because the current going up is larger than the current coming. Go back to circuit one and compute all the voltages of the three resistors. This one, V3 is I3, R3. We just solve for that, and we already have that. So it's not very difficult. It's not very difficult at all. If I need the voltage of this, V1, R1, I'm sorry, uh, I1, R1, and if I need this voltage, it's I2, R2. End of the day. You're done. Now, the only repercussion that happens by getting that negative voltage that you just saw for the first time is if I decided to come to this circuit and install an ohmmeter to measure voltage from here... to here. Let's get the big boy marker out for this. There we go. I hook an ohm meter up between here and here to measure that. Uh, I'm not an ohm meter, a volt meter, okay? I want to measure the voltage. I want to measure the voltage V. If I had put the red lead up here and the black lead down here, I would have measured negative four voltage volts, and that would have told me, hey, um, the orientation on that part is actually the other way. Cool. It also means that if I decided to hook up um, a voltmeter to measure the voltage, say, at one of the other resistors, um, maybe this one, and I would have hooked a voltmeter up. It means that by putting the red line here and the black line to the right, I would have gotten a positive voltage reading because I my assumptions were correct with that resistor. So what are we learning? It's okay to make a mistake at the end and then correct it if these equations are laid out a little bit incorrectly based on your assumptions. The circuits. Now I've left the information out there for you to see everything except the arrows. 
which I'm quickly drawing back in for you. And this is where the road meets the tire. We take this first circuit, we have where the green line is here, shorted out the battery. If it was a current source, we would open it. And I'm sure I'll make another video with a current source or two to show you how to do those. But let's solve this circuit. This fundamental three component circuit is driven by a, 10, a 12 volt battery and it's called a T circuit for the letter T because of the shape that it makes with the R1 and 2 up at the top and R3 coming down the middle. So now I can't help you beyond this. This is where you show your metal and what you're made out of. You have to solve that circuit. You have to find all three of these currents. That's all you have to do. You don't have to find the voltages. You only need to find the currents. But depending on how you go about finding those currents, it is possible, it is plausible that you go find those voltages in some capacity. Because once you have the voltage of, say, this resistor here in black, uh, if you have the voltage and the resistance, you can find the current. Maybe you use current divider to get it directly. I don't know. This is what makes this hard. I can't hold your hand. What I can tell you is that the two resistors here in this green circle are parallel. Do you see it? They have a junction up here at the top, and this resistor is basically down here on the side. They are right here and right here. If you slide R2 down, they're in parallel, which makes for 500 ohms. Now, this becomes a very, very, very simple Chapter 5 problem with one battery and two resistors. And once you calculate IT right here by finding the total resistance of 1500 ohms okay once you do that you get it but it has a benefit it is also the current through ir1 because of power supply one so you're getting this value that i'm now making blue you're getting that blue value right here, okay? See that? That wasn't hard. It just requires thinking. Now, um, step four. I don't know. I decided to go get the voltage of 2.3 because it was one resistor. I decided to get the voltage here, and I found out that there was four volts there, and that allowed me to go here and back out the currents. Now, what currents are those? Well, this is I3's current, which is located here. And this is I2's current, which is located, I'm going with red, here, does that make sense? There, I got you all color-coded. So, we got four milliamps. You, you didn't even have to do this calculation. You didn't even have to do this calculation here. You could have looked at step six, which says, holy smokes, um, these are two 1,000 ohm resistors. Don't they just take... The 8 milliamps that's coming through here, doesn't, doesn't it just split in these two channels? Again, that's why it's hard. I don't know what you're going to want to do. I just know that we solved for the three currents using really, really simple circuit techniques. And look what we've colored in. I'm circling this stuff up here in, um, in uh, black up here. Look what we have filled in. If I can get this stupid thing to work, we have just filled in the left side of this 
set of current equations. So you know what's going to happen here in this black circle to the top. I'm going to go get those three values into the, the third resistor. To the next page, I'm going to go get the three currents that live, and I'm going to work this circuit very similar to the last circuit. I'm going to take these two resistors in green and combine them in parallel. Now, see, if you took them in series, you'd screw the problem up and you'd never recover. So you have to be really careful. You have to make sure that the two resistors touch at this node and you have to make sure that they both touch at this node. And this resistor, R1, definitely is parallel to R3. So, when we solve this circuit, let me flip my page. When we solve this circuit for I total, we take the 1500 ohms that's here, and we get a current of 16 milliamps, which is far larger than the last circuit we solved, and that's because the battery's twice as big. Um, similar values, but the battery's twice as big. So we've got 16 milliamps, and you know what that just gave you? It just gave you the current through R2 that's being delivered by the 24-volt battery, which goes back. So let's go back. Now that we've got IR2 figured out, let me catch up to where I am. Now that we've got IR2 figured out, I went ahead and I solved for um, V13, which is right here. I went ahead and I solved for that. I used the fact that I knew there were 16 milliamps running through that resistor and 500 ohms, and I got 8 volts. Cool. What does that do? Well, you'll notice, well... I mean, you didn't have to do it this way. They're both 1,000 ohms. That 16 milliamps going to split 8 and 8. But I hand calculated it here. Um, 8 volts um, divided by, um, well, that, that value right there. 8 volts divided by uh, the resistance gives you a split. Um, or you can hand compute it. Here's the actual hand computing of 8 volts divided by 1,000 done two times. Or the smarter way would have been to notice that they were equal. Now, we've got 16 milliamps. We've got 8 milliamps. And we've got 8 milliamps. And it needs... Here it is. Here it is. This third resistor, um, it... Uh, let's see if I can use the eraser to get rid of some of this. Wow, nice tool, nice tool. That's uh, the first time using it, so I'm going to rub all of this documentation out so you don't see it. Now, this here is the, um, this here is the third resistor. We assumed back when we started this thing that the current going through that resistor was going to be downwards in that direction. We made the wrong assessment. This 24 volt power supply is so overbearing. Oops. Oh, that was nice. How the heck did I? Woo. I learned something new every day. Okay. Uh, let's see how we get rid of this. I'm not quite sure. That's, oh, wrong, uh, wrong device. Cool. You'll have to forgive me. I'm just learning how to use these tools. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, what we were saying was, and I just learned a new tool that's a little bit brighter than your average marker. That's right there. What we're saying is that this 24 volt circuit, which goes up this way, is actually larger than the current that's coming downward. Now, we didn't know that. I mean, we saw that it was 24 volts on the right, but we would it be to go back to the equations. Here is the, um, here are the values that we just calculated, these three in red. What we did on page two was calculate 
the um, currents for the blue blobs. And these are the same equations we had on the first page. Now we just do simple math. 8 plus 8 is 16 here in the green. And 16 and 4 is 20. And 8, uh, 4 minus 8 milliamps is negative 4 milliamps. This is telling us we made a mistake. When you do these equations and you end up with three positive answers, you have done the circuit either really wrong but got positive answers, or you did it right, I guess, is what you could say. Now, because of the negative answer, it tells us that although we did the computations right, um, we got a negative answer, which means the current through the third resistor, where assumed it was larger. Remember I told you, I said, always assume the first supply to keep things simple will be larger. And here's one where it failed. No big deal. So that doesn't really affect us. We simply reverse the direction of the last component and make it positive and correct the orientation. Um, interesting, huh? Interesting. Now we've calculated all the currents. How hard